Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to download and install the Wasabi Wallet for Bitcoin. So let's get started. So I'm here on the Wasabi homepage and I'm going to download and install the Wasabi Wallet, which is a privacy based Bitcoin wallet. The problem with Bitcoin is that it is transparent. A lot of people think that Bitcoin transactions are anonymous. They are not. The Bitcoin blockchain is available for all to see. Now, that doesn't mean that people can steal your Bitcoins. It just means that they can see your transaction history, which is not a great thing. You don't really want other people knowing how many Bitcoins you have, how many Bitcoins you've received and sent. So we want to keep that information private. There's also an issue of fungibility. So fungibility just means that one equals one. In other words, a US dollar is equal to any other US dollar. In Bitcoin terms, one Bitcoin should equal one Bitcoin. But since Bitcoin has a transaction history that's freely available on the internet, my Bitcoin that I just received from my friend might not have a squeaky clean history, right? It may have been used in the past for something illegal or some kind of money laundering. I really don't know, but anyone can see that transaction history. And so my Bitcoin might be tainted as opposed to the Bitcoin that I buy directly from Coinbase. It might be squeaky clean and have no nefarious history whatsoever. But what that means really is that one Bitcoin does not always equal one Bitcoin. One Bitcoin might be squeaky clean. Another Bitcoin might have a tainted history. Now, when you use the Wasabi wallet, you've wiped the history of that Bitcoin. And so it becomes fungible again. It is not tainted by its history. So, and it's also much more private. So I won't go into too much more about it. The Wasabi wallet is pretty complicated. You might want to educate yourself on how it works but I'm just gonna focus on getting it downloaded and installed, which can be a trick in and of itself. If you're gonna download a Bitcoin wallet like this, that gives you that privacy, there are a lot of bad actors out there that are trying to fool you into downloading their copy of Wasabi, which could be controlled by an attacker or used to surveil on you. So you definitely wanna make sure you go through the cryptographic verification when you download the Wasabi wallet. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So we're going to start with the Windows version right here. I'm just going to download the Windows version by clicking this link. Right, and I'm just going to drop that in my downloads folder. Now I'm going to download the PGP signature. So when I click this link, I get another dialog box. And as you can see, this is an ASC file and I'm gonna save that on my computer. Now I need to do a verification on that installer using that PGP signature file. All right, so in order to do this, I'm gonna need some special software and that special software is GPG for Windows. You're going to want to download and install this software so that you can do this verification. I know this is a little complicated, but I do have some other great videos on how you download and install GPG. We're ready to go. I've got it installed. But there is one small catch. I'm going to launch Cleopatra here. This is a list of all of the developer signing keys that I have installed in my version of Cleopatra. In order to do this verification for Wasabi, we need to get the signing key of the developer in our key ring and we need to get it trusted. So how do we do that? So you can see here that I have my own key already in here. This is my personal key and this is the key that I will use to verify other keys that I import. So in order to get that set up, you'll have to go up here to file, new key pair, and then create personal open PGP key, right? And you put in your name and your email, which are both optional, but you do need to give yourself a password. You can call it whatever you want, right? 
So then you'll have your own certified key in the key ring, right? And that will allow you to certify other signatures. So if we go over here to guide this other link, it's going to take us to this page. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, we can kind of scroll up to the top here. And this is the part that we need to pay attention. It is strongly recommended to verify PGP signatures of the downloaded packages with ZK Snacks PGP public key. And then they give you the fingerprint number of that. So I'm just going to click this link and it's going to take me over here to GitHub. And that is his PGP signature. I know it looks a little strange and complicated, but the easy way to get this downloaded and installed into our keyring is to hit raw. And that's just going to open up his PGP key in our web browser. And then we can save that. So let's just go over here to more tools and choose save page as, right? And I'm just going to drop that in my downloads folder as well. All right. Now, if your browser doesn't support that save feature, you can simply select and copy this into a text file and save the text file. Not too difficult. Now I need to get his signature into Cleopatra. I'm going to choose import, right? And it's looking for an ASC file. It's kind of strange that they didn't provide that file format. They uh, saved it as a text file. But no matter, I can just switch over here to any files, and there's that PGP. It's a text file, but it will work if I do the import. So I'm going to click on that, choose Open. All right, so it's giving us some instructions on how we import this key and validate it. So uh, they mentioned that I should call the person, get their business card, or confirm on a trusted website. We're going to do the trusted website. So I'll hit yes here. All right, and it is Z Snacks or ZK Snacks. That's pretty cool. That's uh, uh, encouraging. And then they've got this fingerprint number here. So we're just going to match that to the one provided on the website. We'll go back up here. We'll go back over here. There's that PGP key. I'm going to scroll it up to the top there. And then we'll uh, bring Cleopatra back. I'm going to have to pull that down slightly. And there I can see ZK Snacks PGP public key 6FB3 blah 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 861E. And then I can look here and see if they match, right? 6FB3 blah 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 861E. All right, so I'm going to verify Z Snacks. I'm going to uh, select this tick box to say that I verified the fingerprint. Then I'll hit next. And then I'll hit certify. And I'm using my own key to certify, which I have a password for. All right, now it's certified. And we can finish that. And there you go. I've got his signature verified and in my key ring. All right, now that we've got all that taken care of, we can certify the installer by going to Decrypt Verify, right? And then we're just going to highlight that Wasabi uh, ASC file that we downloaded. We'll hit Open. All right, and we should see that nice green uh, valid signature by ZK Snacks. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can close down everything else and just run over to our downloads folder and install this. Right. Now I know that was a lot to go through, but we wanna make sure that we trust this. This is very important because we're trusting all our Bitcoin and our privacy to this wallet. We wanna make sure that we've got a verified version of this installer. We don't wanna install any malware on our computer or any spyware or anything like that. All right, so uh, I'm just going to double click the installer. Clear out the clutter here. All right. It's going to install Wasabi. Let's hit install. And then we're done. All right, and so we've got a Wasabi wallet on our desktop for a link. I like to put those on my taskbar. So I'm just going to choose pin to taskbar, and then I'll just get rid of this guy. 
All right. It has been noted that I have a busy taskbar. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to launch it from my taskbar down here. All right, and we're going to choose a password. Now remember, this we're big, we're adults here. Everybody's an adult. We're going to have to remember our password, right? Do not take this lightly. All right, and then they're going to give us a recovery phrase. We'll have 12, right? It's a 12-word recovery phrase. Get out a piece of paper. Uh, write Wasabi Wallet on it. Uh, put your date so you remember the date, um, and then we'll put our recovery phrase. A lot, if you do things like I do, uh, you get a lot of wallets and recovery phrases, uh, and you don't want a bunch of blank sheets of paper with recovery phrases, which you don't know where they go to. So my advice, write down the name of the wallet, the date, and then the recovery phrase. All right, and after that, uh, You'll want to go over your uh, piece of paper and make sure you've written down every word legibly, that uh, there's 12 words total, that you haven't skipped a word or anything like that. Now we can move on. We're just going to click, uh, I wrote down my recovery wallet. Right, we can test the password here. Choose test password. Correct password. I'm going to choose uh, load wallet now. Serious. Okay, we got to put in the password and <laughs> put load wallet here. All right, so the wallet is loading. And there we go. Uh, we've got an empty wallet. And we can send and receive Bitcoin from here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get some Bitcoin in here. So I'm going to generate a receiving address. Oh, they want me to put a label on this. Um, hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna need to give it a name. So I'll call this uh, transaction one. And then uh, give it a receiving address. And there's the receiving address right there, right? Now I need to uh, give this to uh, one of my exchanges so that I can uh, deposit some Bitcoin into this wallet. So I'm going to go over to my crypto.com account and I'm going to withdraw some Bitcoin. You can see I got a little Bitcoin in there. So I'm just going to tap the Bitcoin and I want to do a transfer, right? And I want withdraw Bitcoin. Now I'm going to create a brand new address here. So I'm going to add that address to my whitelist in crypto.com. So I'm going to hit the plus and then it wants the Bitcoin address. Let's see here. I think in Wasabi Wallet, I can generate that QR code, right? It makes life easy. So I'm going to tap my little QR code on my phone. It's going to open up my camera, right? And I can just scan that Bitcoin address in there, right? And then I'll just call this uh, my wallet. And then I'll hit continue. All right, and then I'm going to need my uh, QR code for my crypto.com. I'll tap and paste that QR code in there and hit continue. All right, now since it's a brand new address, crypto.com is going to send me a verification email on that. So I'm going to tap that email. I'm going to confirm that withdrawal address. We'll hit open. And then it's going to ask to relaunch crypto.com, which is fine. And there we go. I've got that new Bitcoin address in there now. So I'm going to hit send BTC. And I'll just max it out. It was about $50 worth of Bitcoin. I'm going to hit send. All right. And then I'll confirm that. And it's going to want my two factor again. All right. I'm going to tap crypto.com code so it copies into my clipboard. Slide back over to crypto.com and tap paste and hit continue. And there we go. I've uh, submitted the BTC withdrawal. All right, so now I'm just gonna have to wait a bit for the uh, withdrawal to process out of my cryptocurrency exchange and end up in my Wasabi wallet. All right, so you can see that the uh, Bitcoin that I transferred has arrived in the wallet. Also notice here that that uh, receiving address just disappeared. Uh, the Wasabi Wallet wants to encourage you not to use the same receiving address more than once. So it just sort of disappears. 
Uh, you can still see the transaction though in history here. And then you can also see it here in the conjoin list. Now the conjoin is where you can uh, anonymize or an, uh, atomize, anonymize your uh, transactions or what we might say obfuscate, right? So uh, this Bitcoin has a transaction history. It came from my exchange to my wallet. Uh, now uh, the Tor is running in, within the wallet. So it did sort of uh, obfuscate the uh, IP address. It went through the Tor network. But if we wanted to anonymize the Bitcoin itself a little better, they have this conjoin function. So we would basically just uh, select it and then uh, enter our password and then in queue selected coins. All right, and then they'll get queued in waiting for other people to jump in. <laughs> So it sort of bumped me out because I didn't really have enough funds uh, to enqueue. Uh, I was a little curious about that. Apparently you need quite a bit of Bitcoin in order to do this functionality. Uh, and I believe it's 0.1 Bitcoin. Uh, it may allow uh, a little less than 0.1 Bitcoin. We'll see, I'll, I'll test it out in the future. But uh, basically uh, you're gonna accumulate transactions over time and then you can group them together and do this conjoin uh, to anonymize your Bitcoin transactions. Uh, so uh, I hope this was helpful. I know I was just sort of scratching the surface on the Wasabi wallet. There's a lot of finer points about how you label your transactions and even what you name your wallets. You wanna make sure that that's done with kind of a system. And I can't stress enough how important the the wallet password is. This is a particular type of wallet that takes your recovery phrase and the private key and combines it with your password. So if you lose your password, even if you have your 12 word recovery phrase, you still will not be able to restore this wallet unless you have the password. This is a special type of wallet. So please, please, please choose a good password and make sure you've got it written down somewhere on paper or electronically and uh, stored in a safe and secure place. Don't just leave it in a text file on your desktop, all right? So anyway, that's the Wasabi wallet. I'll probably do some more videos in the future about how you use this wallet as uh, I learn more about it. So I hope that you got everything you wanted out of this video. If you have any questions, throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. Don't forget, I have a live stream every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me for my live Q&A from Michigan where you can throw out questions and I'll do my best to get them answered. So I uh, hope to see you there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.